could you just explain the difference between hot boredom and cold boredom or the spectrum of boredom? Yeah, yeah. So hot boredom and cold boredom is really great uh, framing to, to, to think about. We don't really do this so much anymore, but imagine you're online at the post office or online at the DMV. And it's just an interminably long line. And you got to be someplace else. And there's nothing to distract you. And that discomfort, that's hot boredom. That's like, it's literally my body starts to feel achy and all that stuff. But contrast it to cold boredom. And I know you've done meditation retreats. Imagine not the first three or four days of a meditation retreat, which often provokes hot boredom, right? What the hell am I doing here? I gotta, I can't even sleep. It's in order. But by the day four, day five, day seven, day 10, you're sitting there and literally there's nothing dramatic going on in your mind. There's no drama and you're okay. And all of a sudden, you catch a glimpse of a bird that's really interesting. That's cold boredom. And I would argue that the mind needs cold boredom. It needs those days of simple, you know, my therapist calls it just simple stirring the oatmeal kind of morning. Here I am, do to do, just stirring the oatmeal. Ah, because that's a moment of rest from which we can then go about the rest of our time, the rest of our day. I have many questions, as one would expect if Mm -hmm. I invited you on the podcast to talk about this. (laughs) Let's start with hypothetical situation. Mm -hmm. So, and and I'll tell you something that I haven't talked about much, maybe not at all publicly, but I've spent the last, I would say, year sitting with a lot of void very deliberately not Mm -hmm. committing to any big projects and it has been one of the most difficult painful experiences of my life and i threw every tool in my toolkit at it meditating do it twice a day do it three times a day take two weeks in the in the wilderness i threw everything i had at it and ultimately decided sitting with this void for this long is actually not good for my mental health. (laughs) And I still haven't prematurely committed to something huge just to commit, Mm -hmm. but I I got to a point where sitting with that void felt unhealthy. And so my, my question to you, and I'm not, I'm not at the point of total burnout, but if, if you're talking to a client Mm -hmm. who like it or not, is not going to get to a place of comfortable, cold boredom before they burn out. Mm-hmm. And you jointly decide, or, or he or she decides, they're going to take a sabbatical. So they have yet to become sort of comfortable stirring the oatmeal, but they're going to take a sabbatical. What advice do you give to that person? Um, start small. Start with tiny steps. You know, um, when you were talking before, baby steps out baby of the office, baby steps, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about starting with a weekend? How about starting with one evening? You know, I mean, literally, you were you were asked me before about the when I started sabbaticalizing, and um, it it feels so long ago and it feels so natural to me that I actually forgot what really began this, and it was something that you said where you talked about going. A, going off into a jungle, going into a forest. and things like for, for the 10 years previous to me taking two months sabbatical, I would take monumental off-the-grid trips. Why were they monumental? Because that was the only way I could really break being attached to the grid. Because if you go to, as I did, you know, cross the polar ice cap in Greenland, for some reason, you don't get a good cell signal. It's like, it's amazing. <laughs> um, you, you are forced, or, you know, I went rafting the Futalafu River in, in the Chilean Patagonian area, and there really isn't a good Wi-Fi signal, and it's beautiful. And so those small little steps, I, I have a client I just started with in September, and he's taking his first vacation two weeks in Namibia, 
first vacation in 10 years. First vacation in 10 years. And it was only because his life partner recently sold her business and that they have, they feel like they have the time. That's not healthy. And uh, so, so practical advice, start small, start where you are, start with a day. You know, our mutual friend, Brad Feld was the first person I know who used the notion of digital Sabbath, right? I'm going to turn off the devices from Friday till Sunday night and just, I'm just not available and train the people in my life to know that that is happening. Just start, just start there. Just start there.